All right, this is our second presentation of the day. Ian Elliott, a colleague of mine at Google, is going to talk about Vulcan on Android. Please, Ian, take it away. Thanks. Yeah, so I'm Ian. Thanks. Um, I'm going to talk about the Android Vulcan strategy and things that we're doing to, to make that real. And so say what the strategy is and then talk about some of the key aspects of it. And... Oh, this this would have been cool if this was not a PDF, the little Android, you know, motion and stuff. But stay tuned for more details are going to come out at, at Google I.O. and in other presentations over the, the course of the next year. So, uh, but I will give you the highlights. So first, in terms of the Vulcan strategy that we have on Android, basically we want to have Vulcan everywhere. And there already are a few phones that, that have accomplished this, but uh, we're trying to get that across the ecosystem. So this, this slide will point out, you know, there are a few apps, like a few AAA games, a few apps that will use Vulkan directly, but most are really going to use Vulkan through engines, game engines, whatever, middleware, or layered APIs, such as Angle, that we've, you know, talked about a little bit, and I'll talk a little bit more. Web GPU, we had the discussion from Brandon yesterday, and, and I think there's another one from Arm later today. And then um, other APIs, such as Hui or Ski of EK layered APIs. And I'll just put in a plug that I was asked to give that if any of you want to be an early access person for web GPU, um, please, please come talk to me or, or somebody else at Google. The, the idea here is, is was mentioned yesterday, there's not just being able to use it through the web, but also be able to use it natively directly on, uh, on Android apps. So as I mentioned, not all software is going to use it directly. So if you're an engine developer or an application developer, middleware person, whatever, um, basically, I think most of you have already done this, but we'd like you to have a Vulkan backend, right? Create a Vulkan backend, make Vulkan the, back, the default, and then if anybody runs into problems where you say, can't use the Vulkan backend, I need to keep using Glass or something else, uh, let us know, right? One of the problems I'll, I'll talk about is that some people, they, they run into a problem, they just switch back to the old reliable OpenGL ES, and uh, that's not what we want. We want everybody to use Vulkan, and we want them to be successful, right? We want everybody's software to work well on top of Vulkan, so that's what we're pushing for. And then eventually, at some point, everybody can delete their gloss back in, and that's what we want, right? We want everybody using Vulkan. Um, so, most of the rest of this talk is going to talk about the dependencies for that. Let me talk real quick about Angle. So I say Angle is for the stragglers, right? As in, we want everybody using Vulkan directly or indirectly through an engine and so forth. But we think realistically there are going to still be people out there who use OpenGL for a long time, right? Maybe it's a game that it's a cash cow. They created it 10 years ago. They keep making money off of it. Why, why invest more in it? Um, or they just frankly don't need anything better. So we think WebGPU is going to help for a lot of the folks who st still want to do things and have an easy to use API. But um, anyway, so we have Angle, and Angle's wonderful. Um, I used to work on it. Uh, Cody in the back worked on it, and uh, really, really valuable cross platform. So not just on, on uh, Android. It's 3.2 conformant with the Vulkan backend. And um, there's a few of the phones out there now, um, like some of the Samsung phones that are that are using it as their glass driver. There's some others that have passed 3.2 conformance with it. And so expect more and more over time that there's going to be more people using using Angle as their glass driver. And then we're eventually going to get to the point where that is the universal glass driver implementation that everybody uses. And we think there's going to be some good benefits, reducing fragmentation, making, you know, allowing everybody to focus focus their efforts on Vulcan, and then, uh, you know, good things will happen. So, we want everybody to be able to be successful. What do we need it for everybody to be successful on top of Vulcan, right? We need some consistent features. Some of the talks this week have talked about how you can't really depend on things. And we talked a little bit last night on the, in the panel discussion about this. We need correctness, stability, no performance surprises. 
So you could kind of lump all of those things together into the term quality. But a lot of people, when they think of quality or bugs, they think of just the correctness issue. But really, there's there's different aspects to it. So, so first, let's talk about consistent features. Profiles, all right? We've had some great discussion about profiles, so I'm not gonna, I think everybody knows what they are. And uh, we have two types on Android. The first type that we created a, a couple of years ago, um, Android baseline profile. And, and Trevor was very instrumental in going, digging into the database and trying to see for all the phones that were active at that time, including really old phones, what was, what was it that 85% of those phones used? So it was really a backwards looking profile. It looked back and said, okay, here's what all the hardware vendors just happened to provide, all the random choices that they made. Um, and, and so that gives you something that you can, can count on. If you're trying to write software and you wanna know what's gonna work on almost every phone out there, there's, there's your profile. Um, but that's not where we really wanna go because we were, again, wanna drive it so that your software works well. And so we created a new kind of profile. We're calling it we, naming discussions, right? Don't you love naming discussions? Um, so we called it Vulcan Profiles for Android or VPA for short. And the first one has been published. So for the upcoming Android 15 release that'll come out sometime later this year, we've published, here's the minimums, right? So it reflects the needs of software developers and we're trying to drive consistent features. So not just what did people want to do, but, but what is it that people need so that the software works well? And so we're gonna require this. So once Android 15 comes out, anybody introducing a new system on a chip for, for phones, they're gonna be required to meet all of the requirements of that profile, right? So you'll be able to start counting on that as more and more phones come out that, uh, that meet that profile. And, and as opposed to say the roadmap profile from Kronos, which is sort of mid to high end, this will be every phone you know, every SOC that, that comes out after that point. So uh, expect new VPA profiles every year. So talking a little bit about the process, the, we started with talking to software developers, right? And instead of having multiple profiles, like having a WebGPU profile or an Angle profile or a Unity profile or whatever, we, we talked to software developers and said, what do you need to work well? And then we kind of coalesced that. We came up with a humongous profile and went out to the hardware vendors. And it's like, okay, when can you deliver all these things? Can you deliver all these things, right? What? Because we, we want, to, you know, again, everybody's software to work well. So we coalesced it. We get, went out, talked to people. We got feedback. And then we iterated for a while, right? And then and then and some of that iteration, after we weren't just talking to the, to the GPU providers. We were also talking to the SOC makers. Because, you know, somebody might say, you know, hey, yeah, these GPUs can deliver this functionality. And then some software or SOC vendor says, yeah, but we really want to use a really old GPU. <laughs> it doesn't need a lot. So lots, a lot of iteration. And then we finally, for Android 15, we've published that. But we also have profiles that we've been talking with hardware vendors about for Android 16, 17, and 18. Right? So we're trying to plan in the future. And some of the discussions... I've had where um, an SOC vendor, maybe for a low-end phone, is trying to get something really low-end, so they might be tempted to use something really old. Um, and because I've talked to my hardware vendors, the GPU providers, I can say, well, if you use this one, you're going to be happy. <laughs> if you use this other one, you know, we might cut you off, kind of thing. So, so um, trying to get way out in advance, and because hardware life cycles are are pretty long, right? You know, they're, they're, people are, are uh, working well in the advance of the future. So that's the VPA process. So call to action. If you're a software provider, if you're trying to develop software that's going to run on Android, please come talk to us, right? We've already talked to some people, but we were, you know, like Trevor and I, we've, we have day jobs. We're, we're busy doing a lot of other things. And so um, we want to keep talking to more people. So come talk to us and uh, Ian Elliott at Google.com. There's my email address. Okay, correctness and stability, bugs. People complain about dri buggy drivers. 
But there's also bugs in applications and software, right? I've written plenty of bugs in my life. How many people, have, anybody here never written a bug? <laughs> right? You know, so it's it's reality, right? So, so how do we get to that that point where we have correctness and stability? So we want to improve drivers. We want to improve applications, engines, and so forth, right? Um, you know, Cody and I, we've worked a lot on improving angle quality. We've worked with other people on improving their software. And then we want to get updated drivers. So I'm going to talk about this. And, I, and internally, we've kind of had this discussion for, for a few years that we've observed there's this vicious cycle that happens. So let me describe this, right? So IHV, GPU provider, they, they come up with a new piece of hardware. They come up with driver. They test the best they can, right? There's Vulkan CTS. We talked about 4 million tests. Okay, wow. You know, and they, and they test with apps that they know about and so forth. They ship it off to SOC provider, to OEMs. OEM creates a new phone, they ship that, and then you guys get the phone and you try your app with it and you say, huh, oh, bugs, right? So we've seen a bug. Well, then one of the questions, some of the, you know, some people are big and they're highly motivated. They use Vulkan everywhere they can. They use Glass where they can't use Vulkan. But others, it's like, you know, who would I report this to? I don't know, you know, I don't know Tom at Arm. I don't know, you know, you know Ralph at Samsung or whoever. They, they don't know folks. Um, a lot of them are like, I don't have time to deal with this. I'm trying to make money. And um, so then they test their, their app with Plus. They say, well, hey, it works with Plus. It didn't work with Vulcan everywhere. I'll just ship with Vulcan. Or, I'm sorry, I'll just ship with Plus. They don't report it to anybody. Um, later, we might talk to them and they say, oh, yeah, we ran into bugs. What are those bugs? I don't know. And and then we go to the hardware people and say, hey, we, we, we hear that there used to have bugs. And they're like, nobody told us that there are bugs. So we think our software is pretty good. Right. So kind of a vicious cycle. But then it gets worse because even as people, hardware, our hardware partners do, ship, do fix bugs as they find them and as people report them, um, there are some hardware providers out there, some phone makers and some SOC makers, they don't want to ship new drivers, right? That costs money to test them. And, and, and their their business model doesn't doesn't do that. So so we're trying to break this first cycle. And but first a couple of lessons. One a lesson I learned a long time ago as a driver writer, drivers improve with with exposure to content, right? <laughs> Drivers have lots of paths in them. Hardware has lots of paths, basically, if you think about it. And the more, you know, despite all the, the work that we do, as we see more apps that exercise our drivers in new and interesting ways, we find the bugs. Then we can fix the bugs, right? If, we, if nobody, if, if there's only two apps out there, they're not going to find as many bugs as if they're 200. So um, that's one of the lessons. But another lesson I learned, apps improve with exposure to drivers right i've seen lots of software that well, i tested on this this phone or this you know desktop pc because i used to be a desktop guy they test there well obviously everything works like that a piece of hardware right no right and so 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 both of these things are true right we need exposure we need need this uh, as opposed to the vicious cycle, we need to have a virtuous cycle. So let me talk about that. So we can break this. So let's look at OEM ships a new driver, software provider finds a bug. We're going to make it really easy. One of my missions, one of the, my new projects for this year is to make it easy for developers to, to create a trace and send it to us so that we can we can take it from there, right? You don't have to worry about who do you talk to. You can talk to us. We'll take it from there. We'll work with the hardware providers. They'll fix the bug. We'll try and get beta drivers off to you so that you can test and say, yeah, it really does fix my bug and it doesn't create three more. Um, get that feedback loop going. And in some cases, that might actually create a new loop where you don't even need to talk to us. You can talk to the hardware people directly. But again, you can always we'll be able to come to us and we'll help you. Um, and then we're going to look at trying to create a new kind of driver. So one of the problems for the, some of the, o, the OEMs who the, they don't want to have this big testing burden of getting a new driver all the time and having to test it. So, okay, let's create a, an optional driver that will be there so that, 
you know, Facebook and everything, you know, Gmail keeps working with, with, with the driver that originally shipped on the system. But if, but for your game, there'll be a driver that can be there that you can say, hey, I want my app to use this optional driver as opposed to the base system driver, right? And we'll work with OEMs to, to make sure that they ship that. And then encourage them that, hey, and, and again, more details will be coming out in the future, but uh, work with the OEMs to eventually take that optional driver and make it their new driver and start updating drivers more uh, more frequently. And I, will, and I don't want to say all OEMs are that way, right? There are people who are shipping drivers that are improving the, the state of the art, and, and we like that. We want to just help, again, get a virtuous cycle, get everything going well. So another part of this is application tests. So no offense to all the, the people who've worked on Vulcan CTS, and I'm, I'm one of them in the past, um, but it's really one way that I would look at it is it's kind of a collection of unit tests. Right, this test tests this thing, and this test tests this other thing, and, and so on. But if you think about what an app does, right, it's like, okay, there's 10, 10 features or settings I'm gonna set for this draw call, and then I'm gonna use a few of those and some other ones for the next draw call, and so forth. And you get into these complicated usage patterns, that's where bugs are found in drivers, and, and Vulkan CTS doesn't necessarily do that. So, one of the things we had, so Cody in the back, again, he, he's worked on this thing called, we call the angle tracer, where we can capture a trace of OpenGL calls and then replay it on any driver. And as we've done that, then replaying it with angle, which has a Vulcan back end, guess what we find? Driver bugs, right? Because again, we're using, using Vulcan in a way more like a, an app would do, well, not more like, exactly like an app would do and so but one of the problems with with Vulkan and this is something Pierce and Mitty and I learned um, before Vulkan 1.0 is Vulkan traces are not portable right because again part of the it's a low level API you have to do something a little bit different on this device than on that device and so just because you have a trace on on say you know here's a pixel 8 is that going to run on a Samsung S24 uh, probably not right different drivers, different GPUs, even the same phone. If I have an old driver from Android 11 and now I update to Android 14, the driver's gonna be different. There's gonna be different behaviors. And so, but we've been working with, with, with Lunergy in terms of graphics reconstruct and, 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 and some other partners who maybe don't wanna be named to let's improve graphics reconstruct and let's be able to create some C++ code from those traces. And then from that, again, if you work with us, we can, can look and say, okay, here's the unique things that you're doing. We can wrap that into a new test, right? Th that will reflect what your application is doing or your engine or whatever. And then we can make that so that it, um, we can make new tests that reflect what real apps do. That'll catch bugs that um, Vulcan CTS isn't able to catch. And so my appeal, Here's another call to action, right? If you're developing software, please work with us. Provide us, you know, maybe it's a demo, maybe it's a trace, maybe it's, you know, whatever. Something that we can turn into test, or maybe you can work, turn it into a test, but something so that we can, you know, help our driver writers be able to see, you know, okay, here's a set of tests that reflect what, what um, applications really do. And again, that'll help you, it'll help them, virtual cycle. So eliminating performance surprises, that's another thing, right? There's, don't you just hate it where you, you know, everything works really well and then suddenly you try it on a different piece of hardware and it's like, surprise, you know, it runs, runs dog slow. Um, so one of the problems here is, is that for years, the hardware providers, they, they have this old, they have some old benchmarks. Anybody have heard of Manhattan, right? Been around forever, people tune to that. Why? Well, that's the benchmark you care about. You know, if you have a good Manhattan score, then that's good. Well, that's based on OpenGL. We want to have new benchmarks. And there are some, but we'd like to have more, right? We'd like to focus everybody on, on Vulkan so that Vulkan is successful and everybody can be successful with it. So um, that's one of the keys. Another thing here is profiling tools. So we have um, 
you know, different GPU vendors have their own proprietary tools. We have something called Android Graphics Inspector (AGI). Um, we're working with partners so that so that there can be new profiling tools out there that will give you visibility into where you're spending time and provide actionable insights, things that you can do to make your software go better. So uh, look forward to, again, in the future, there will be more announcements about this. Um, another thing we'd like to do, again, as I've already indicated, let's replace those old GLUS benchmarks with new Vulkan-based benchmarks. And then here's another opportunity for, for you to help, right? If you, again, just like you could help us create new tests, we could, you could work with us to create new benchmarks, things that reflect what applications really do. And if we do that, then we can get software, you know, driver software that reflects what, what applications really need. We can have um, better quality, better performance, and uh, life will be better for all of us. And we'll come to these things in the future and, and it'll be, uh, we'll have a lot happier news to, to share, right? So that's that's what we want. So uh, thank you all. All right, I see a hand. Let me grab that. Hey, Ian. Uh, you may like me. We're uh, about to release a Vulcan benchmark suite. Nice. Um, so we may need to talk after this, but. And uh, one of the things we're running into, and you kind of alluded to with profiles, is uh, we target ray tracing very specifically. And so if I put my app in, app, <coughs> in the App Store, I need a way of sort of excluding uh, non-ray tracing Vulkan devices. So it would be very helpful if I could upload a profile together with my APK or ABB um, so that it doesn't install on devices that don't have support for the various extensions that are in the profile. Is that something that you guys are even thinking of, or is it like something in the plan? So there are ways that the Play Store um, is able to do stuff like that. I don't know all the details because I've never had to deal. I've, I've actually never published an app on the Play Store. So, but I understand there are things. I don't know if it works with Vulkan profiles, but that's something we'd be very interested in doing. I would be interested in this as well because it's like I don't want to necessarily let down potential non ray tracing users that install the app and then go like, oh well this sucks. I can't can't <laughs> install. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, totally get that. All right. Yeah, so let's let's chat and make sure that um that, that we do that. Great question. Uh, maybe to just answer quickly the question that uh, was raised. Uh, we can do it already with baseline 2021 and 2022 and um, use the application manifest uh, to filter the application based on this profile uh, that already exists, but we can't upload a dedicated uh, profile for an application. And uh, I will totally agree that we need uh, such feature. Um, uh, uh, so uh, to understand the presentation, um, so you said you don't want to publish new baseline profiles, and I'm trying to understand the reasoning with this because uh, from my point of view, uh, that was very, very useful because we don't have access as application developer to what's available in the ecosystem. While uh, with uh, 2021 and 2022, at least we had some percentage of the device that uh, that uh, works, uh, that support this feature, even though it's not that many features, uh, already it's more than uh, just guessing. And typically, people or application developer they will just uh, try not to use anything to be sure that the application doesn't crash because there is no way to filter or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. So I was hoping that you would be releasing a 2024 baseline profile. But now I think I start to understand the strategy, but I would like a clarification uh, regarding this opt-in driver. So is the idea that you are shipping the, um, a new type of profiles uh, that are kind of roadmap type of profiles, is that um, the application will be able to ship with the driver, with a Vulkan driver, in that case, if we can have an updated driver with the application, for sure, we don't need the baseline profile anymore. 
but uh, uh, but uh, yes, uh, so I'm, I'm not totally clear on how this opt-in driver, which is a huge hope, I think, for a lot of uh, application developers, uh, really work or how it's delivered. Is it delivered as part of the device, depending on the will of the device manufacturer or uh, of the will of Google or the will of the application developer and that sort of thing. Okay, so if I a, make few, sense. <laughs> a, few, a few topics in there. So in terms of the, yeah, and, I, and I, Trevor called me on this. So where a lot of our energy went from the baseline profile to the minimum VPA profiles so that we could try to, again, re reflect what software developers need and push on that. Um, if we need more a new baseline profile, if that would be really helpful, I I definitely support doing it. Right? Um, it's a it's a different thing of going and looking at databases and trying to see what what's what's active in the field today. A lot of the energy has been spent looking at okay, what do software developers need and trying to be forward looking. So. Um, you know, let me just ask, pull of hands, would would a new baseline profile be helpful for people? Definitely see, okay. <laughs> no, a few hands, so, okay. And then um, you talked about the opt-in driver. So this is something where, again, more details will be announced over time as we, we're starting to work with, with hardware partners on, on this. Um, both in terms of mechanism and, and policy and, and, and negotiations and, and, and so forth. But part of the idea is that some people, again, they don't want to take just a new driver that everything uses because their concern is, what if I take a new driver and suddenly, you know, somebody's favorite app stops working and suddenly hundreds of phones get returned, right? That's, that's, that's their concern. And, and so the idea of the opt-in driver would be, okay, great, keep that system driver there, but now have this other driver that fixes bugs. And, and because the, you know, let's say I'm, I can't come up with a good name for an, for an app off the top of my head, but if I have the, the FUBAR app and, and I say, hey, this driver fixes all the problems, my software works really well, I'll opt in, that removes the pressure from the hardware provider of, are people going to return phones? Because they might return a phone because you know their favorite game, Fubar, doesn't work. But now Fubar does work because there's this optional driver. So it kind of changes the whole financial incentive model and so forth. Does that that help? And in terms of delivery mechanism and all that kind of stuff, those are details that are still being worked out. But that's that's what we're really pushing for and wanting to bring about this year. Yeah. So kind of echoing what. Uh, Christopher was saying about a new baseline profile would be super helpful. It's great to see all this forward thinking stuff about shipping different drivers and opt in drivers. But as a game developer, I'm targeting things that are five or six years old easily and having more of a here's the baseline stability for the market would be amazing. Okay. Sounds There's definitely good. a lot of guesswork nowadays. Yeah. Another thing that we're, we're looking at doing. Hopefully not pre-announcing anything bad here, but there's details we're working out of, of for those who are willing to use Vulkan everywhere where it works well and still use Glass where it doesn't, we're looking at creating a library that would make it easy for people in their software to know, hey, I use Vulkan on these apps, on these devices, I use Glass on these ones. So if baseline profiles is helpful, yeah, great, great feedback. Appreciate it. We're going to have one last question that we've cut it off. Sorry, maybe I'm going to ask too much about mechanism, <laughs> but uh, so in your make a question if you don't want to answer. Uh, so if we have an opt-in driver and a stable driver, I'm not sure what to call it, um, does it mean the application will be able to select which driver they want to run? Is it, is it from, uh, uh, yes, uh, the C++ code uh, that we we can control it as an application developer. Yeah, the the exact mechanism for that opt-in is is still being worked on tech the technical parts of that. But yeah, you'll be able to 
I mean, basically, if, if you don't do anything, you would just get the, the normal driver that's on the system, and there'll be something that you can do, whether it's manifest or whatever, that would say, yeah, I want to use this driver. Okay, you know, so the, the, the driver with fixes. So then I would recommend that we could list the driver <laughs> or, or as physical device, multiple driver, and that we can know which one in one way or another, but programmatically in Vulkan, make an extension <laughs> if you want, there is plenty. So that we we can test, and uh, if there is one that fails, then the application can fall back on the other one. But at least that we can have a control even on the user system. Uh, so you're looking at yeah? Could you query it? That's a, that's a good question. I mean, well, we're definitely making loader changes um, to to be able to to do whatever we're doing here. Um, so. Yeah, it's good. And if again, if anybody has inputs and so forth, please, please come chat with me. All right. Thank you, everyone. A round of applause for Ian.